Okay, we're ready to begin, everyone. Uh, just uh, for your information, we are recording this session. So uh, hopefully uh, if you missed it or have to leave, or if you would like someone, one of your friends to watch the session afterwards, you'll be able to get it from our website. Uh, but um, let me start and say good evening to everyone. And thank you so much for joining uh, today's lecture on the importance of eye drops. My name is Tom Gottlieb and I'm the treasurer and a director of the Glaucoma Research Society of Canada. Today we are presenting this lecture in support of uh, World Glaucoma Week. You can find them online by Googling World Glaucoma Week or directly by visiting their website, www.worldglaucomaweek.org. The Glaucoma Research Society of Canada is a Canadian national registered charity committed to funding research into the causes, diagnosis, prevention, and the treatment of glaucoma. And the society is the only Canadian charity solely dedicated to the funding of glaucoma research. It consists of a volunteer board of directors led by our president, Jim Parks, and the founder and chair of our scientific advisory committee, Dr. Graham Trope. All of our operations are carried out from our offices at the CNIB building on Bayview Avenue in Toronto, which is expertly run by our administrator, uh, Suzanne Marshall, who you heard earlier on the call. I would like to give you give a special shout out to Suzanne who made this webinar possible. Uh, she sent out all the timely reminders and she will be following up with you by sending out a survey and will manage any of the follow-up questions we receive by email. So Suzanne is kind of the glue that holds our office together and we couldn't do this without her. So thanks very much, Suzanne. Since 1989, we have raised more than $5 million in support of over 250 research projects. Over 80% of donations received to the society go directly to the people in our Canadian hospitals and universities that conduct important glaucoma research. Each year we receive innovative proposals from scientists and researchers across Canada to study and investigate glaucoma. These proposals are evaluated by our scientific advisory committee and our network of qualified reviewers. The best proposals are awarded grants based on available funds collected during the year from supporters like you. Without your help, none of this would be possible. So if you have supported the society in the past, we thank you so very, very much. If you would like to become a supporter or contribute tonight, just visit our website or call our office to make a donation. And now I'm happy to move on and introduce Dr. Rajiv Bindlish. Dr. Bindlish graduated from the University of Toronto Medical School in 1994. He completed his ophthalmology residency at Dalhousie University from 1994 to 1999. And he was chief resident there from 1997 to 1998. Dr. Bindlish subsequently completed a fellowship in cornea, glaucoma, and anterior segment surgery. Please don't ask me to explain what that means. It's very complicated. But from 1999 to 2000 at Allegheny Ophthalmic and Orbit Specialists in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He's a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada and a diplomat of the American Board of Ophthalmology. Dr. Binlish has been in private practice in Oakville, Ontario since 2000, where he focuses on, no pun intended, he actually focuses on general ophthalmology, cataract and glaucoma surgery. And finally, Dr. Binlish is a clinical assistant professor in the Department of Surgery Division of Ophthalmology at McMaster University. I'll be turning the meeting over to Dr. Binlish in just a moment. Remember, you can submit a question during the meeting by entering or clicking on the Q&A icon. Uh, I'm not sure it'll be at the bottom of your screen or at the top of your screen, but it's got the letters Q&A underneath. Dr. Binlish will be answering your questions live at the end of his presentation. But if you think of a question after the meeting or have a follow-up question, just send us an email at info 
at glaucomaresearch.ca. I hope you enjoy the presentation. So now if you'll just give me a moment, I'll bring in uh, Dr. Binlish online. Let me see if I can do that. There you are. Hi, Raj. Hi. How are you doing tonight? <laughs> I am doing well. Okay. So I see you've got your uh, presentation starting up. So that's great. Um, we actually have, uh, just to let you know, we have 122 people logged on right now. So uh, we have a very strong interest in your talk. So I'm going to sign off now and turn it over to you. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much for the great introduction, Tom. Um, it's a pleasure to present you this lecture. Um, we're going to be talking about the importance of eye drops, and hopefully I can give you a few uh, tips and tricks, um, and as well, uh, some instructional video on how to use eye drops. Uh, this is World Glaucoma Week, and um, the whole uh, idea behind World Glaucoma Week is to raise the awareness of glaucoma around the world. It's one of the leading causes of irreversible blindness. And uh, our, our goal is to make people aware of the risk of this condition. And uh, the World Glaucoma Organization has asked us to hold webinars and seminars. And uh, obviously uh, the Canadian Glaucoma Research Society would like to uh, present to you this uh, first inaugural webinar. And um, if we do get good feedback, uh, we may uh, continue this uh, down the road. So once again, thank you for joining me. Um, so the first thing is, is some people don't really understand what is glaucoma. Glaucoma, and I apologize if this is a little technical, but glaucoma is an optic neuropathy. The optic nerve is essentially, it's a computer cable that's connecting your eye back to the brain and it's transmitting the information back and forth to interpret what you're seeing. Uh, in glaucoma, uh, pressure in your eye damages that optic nerve and that leads to loss in your peripheral vision. Glaucoma is asymptomatic. So in fact, approximately 50% of people don't know that they have glaucoma. And as I tell people, uh, you don't walk into a clinician's office saying you have glaucoma. You walk in saying you have trouble seeing, you have difficulty with your glasses, you're having some blurry vision, you can't see the TV. And uh, through the, uh, a proper eye exam, that's how we detect glaucoma. It is the leading cause of irreversible blindness and it affects about 1% of our population. So approximately 400,000 Canadians uh, have glaucoma. There are many risk factors for primary open angle glaucoma. There are two types of glaucoma. One is open angle glaucoma. The other is angle closure glaucoma. Uh, angle closure glaucoma is a particular type of glaucoma. We won't really be addressing that directly tonight. However, some of the eye drop treatments are, are very similar. Uh, risk factors for open angle glaucoma include uh, elevated eye pressure. We call that intraocular pressure or IOP. Uh, a cup disc ratio, so that is the uh, enlargement of the computer cable, the optic nerve in the back of the eye, and associated visual field loss. Um, people with thin corneas, corneas are the watch crystal of the eye, and we call that central corneal thickness. A study done approximately 20 years ago called the Ocular Hypertension Treatment Study actually addressed corneal thickness, and we found that it is a significant risk factor for uh, the development and progression of glaucoma. Uh, the thinner your cornea, sometimes the greater the risk. A family history of glaucoma, so if you have brothers, sisters, parents, aunts or uncles, that increases your risk. Um, unfortunately, uh, African ancestry is also a risk factor, but in fact, glaucoma affects all populations and all races. Uh, significant uh, nearsightedness, myopia, cardiovascular risk factors, diabetes, increasing age, and some other risk factors include previous eye trauma and the use of uh, steroid uh, medications. Intraocular pressure is 
one of the most uh, important risk factors, and it's the most important risk factor that we can modify. And there's a strong dose response relationship. What that means is the higher the eye pressure, the greater the risk for the development of glaucoma. And some people think that this is linear. So for every uh, one or two millimeters that my pressure is higher, my risk is up by one or two millimeters. That's not the case. As you start to get into mid-high 20s or into the 30s, there's a significant increase in the risk of developing glaucoma. But beware, uh, there are situations where people can have high eye pressure and no evidence of glaucoma. And there are certainly a, a number of patients that can have very low eye pressures and very significant glaucoma damage. Intraocular pressure plays a major role in glaucoma, but high eye pressure does not mean glaucoma. It's the only risk factor that we can treat. And lowering the eye pressure does reduce the risk of visual field loss and glaucoma progression. And we have two landmark studies that uh, were done uh, many years ago and are continuing to this day, the low tension glaucoma study and the advanced glaucoma intervention study, which clearly showed that lowering intraocular pressure is beneficial in glaucoma. So, you I mean, I hate to say this, but uh, we are plumbers. Uh, we're essentially dealing with uh, plumbing in the eye. And uh, in the back of the eye, we have something called the ciliary body right here. And the ciliary body produces fluid. That aqueous fluid travels sort of in and around the eye. And this fluid is important to help the, um, the eye function. So it flows between the lens and your iris and it flows into the anterior chamber and then it eventually exits the eye through the trabecular meshwork. And this is the area here that uh, is our concern in glaucoma. So current glaucoma treatments are essentially to lower the eye pressure. How can we lower the eye pressure? Either we turn down the faucet so we have to use certain eye drops or certain types of laser to uh, decrease the, the aqueous production through the ciliary body. Try and get the drain to work better. And again, we use eye drops, laser, or surgery. And sometimes we have to bypass the drain altogether. And again, certain ones of our eye drops and uh, certain surgeries that we perform will do this. Many of you have probably seen these drops. These are many of the drops that uh, we currently use for glaucoma. Some of you may be on one, two, or three of these medications. Uh, these are the boxes and uh, these are what the actual bottles look like. Um, unfortunately, a lot of our medications have gone generic and uh, these are the trade bottles, but be, be aware that uh, you may not necessarily be getting uh, the real medication. What is the biggest fear and why a lot of people opt to pick eye drops? And it's really the fact that, uh, I mean, many people are afraid of laser and the concept of laser. Um, we're not going to kill you and we're not going to blow your brains out. Um, but laser is a very good option uh, for intraocular uh, pressure lowering. And we have some new studies, uh, very promising studies to help uh, corroborate that, and, and that, that includes the light trial. So don't be afraid of lasers if your doctor says you need laser to either uh, help further control your, your eye pressure, because it, it's not gonna blow your brains out. I, I promise you it will, it won't. So how is it best to apply your eye drops? And I recommend, now some people like to lie down, some people like to sit up, it's whatever you're comfortable with. And again, sometimes you're gonna apply the medication yourself and sometimes you may have a family member help you. But it's best to tilt your head back just a little bit. Um, obviously, as we get older, um, the flexion in our neck and our necks can get stiff. Um, so obviously do it as best you can. You don't, you don't want to overextend the neck. You don't have to tilt it so basically um, your, your head is perpendicular to your body. You just maybe want to raise it up about 30 degrees. Um, I usually recommend you pull down your lower lid and that creates a little pocket. And that's what I want you to instill the eye drop into. Once you've instilled the eye drop, obviously place it in the other eye. 
close your eyes and pinch the corners of your eyes. This helps uh, minimize the eye drops from getting into the back of your throat and so you don't get the bad taste. Uh, and also minimizes the amount of medication that can get into your body. Um, some medications have some significant side effects, uh, especially the beta blockers such as Timolol uh, or uh, Betagan. Beta um, they can uh, affect your heart rate. They can induce uh, breathing issues with asthma. Uh, don't worry if too much drop gets into the pouch or it feels like the uh, um, some of the drop is spilling out of the out of the pouch. You only need to put one drop into your eye. Wait at least five to fifteen minutes if you have to use a different eye drop at the same time. Applying two eye drops at the same time, the first eye drop may be washed out by the second eye drop. Take a tissue and wipe away any excess drop from around your eyes immediately um, after instilling the drop. Again, this minimizes any side effects because the drop can spill onto the skin around your eye. It can irritate the skin. It can create redness. Um, and it can cosmetically, for some people, it can, it can be uh, quite bothersome by, again, wiping away any excess drop from around your eye that will prevent some of these side effects. And once again, I don't ever recommend applying an eye drop right before you go to bed. And the whole reason is, again, it's just then the eye drop will be sitting on the skin of your eye uh, all through the night. And again, that can lead to more side effects. So if you do like to go to bed around, uh, say, 11 p.m., put the drop in, say, 10 or 1030, wipe away any excess, and then uh, about a half an hour later, go to bed. Eye drops have side effects. And I mean, this is some of the, the biggest uh, uh, issues we have with glaucoma patients that can cause eye redness, that can cause an allergic reaction, that can cause significant dry eye. Um, and unfortunately, it's a catch-22. We need the eye drops to help uh, obviously control your intraocular pressure. But as well, if they are giving intolerable side effects, we can't carry on with them. These are all different things we'd like to avoid. Some of it, the allergic reaction or the dry eye may be related to the medicine itself. It may also be related to the preservative that many of the medicines uh, use. And that common one is called BAK. One way we can hopefully uh, reduce uh, an allergic reaction or, or sort of the significant dry eye is to use preservative free eye drops. And, uh, um, I mean, the three that most commonly we have is Cosopt, Trusopt, and Monoprost. Um, Monoprost, that's uh, what you see, the little skinny tube. That's what they look like. And I know it, they can be cumbersome to some people yeah, to break off the tip and apply the drop, especially if your hands have some arthritis or a little bit of a tremor can be difficult. But it is, uh, they are important medicines and, and you have to understand, we sometimes use them to avoid those side effects that you saw in the previous slide. So people um, have a lot of opinions about glaucoma. Um, some people feel that we as physicians don't uh, tell people about the seriousness and what is the seriousness of not taking the eye drops. Uh, again, some people feel because there's no pain and the vision loss is very, very uh, subtle that it's tempting to cheat and not use your medication. Uh, one of our faults as doctors is sometimes we compartmentalize, meaning we don't let things get to us. And, and sometimes we get upset at the patients because we say, oh, you're not using your eye drops and we'll just blatantly say that. But you uh, I mean, sometimes that may not be the right um, solution. And I think a, a good candid discussion about using eye drops is very important. Um, some people feel uh, missing an eye drop occasionally is considered non-compliance. We're human, we will all miss medication. All we're trying to so say is keep that misses to the minimum. And you know, again, sometimes people feel that they wanna just quit all their eye drops and see what happens to the pressure. Um, that's probably not the best idea because un unfortunately you can get some significant damage if you have uh, fairly advanced glaucoma. We have a couple of topics in glaucoma and this is a little bit complicated and I apologize, 
but we call this persistence and adherence. And this, uh, these two terms basically mean sort of the start and the continuous use of uh, glaucoma medications. Uh, persistence is sort of the duration of continuous treatment. Adherence is the uh, prevalence of continuing with that same medication at various time points. And what we found in a number of studies is really only about 50% of patients uh, continue to use their eye drops at six months and 37% refill their prescription at three years. Um, typically, this is better for people with open angle glaucoma and typically it's better if people have a better understanding of their disease. Also, if you had a family member that's had a significantly poor outcome from glaucoma, you, be, you may be more likely to use your medication. But the reality is 23% of patients don't fill their prescription and there's sometimes a significant gap between filling your prescription and that gap can be up to about 112 days. And, and non-compliance is a significant risk factor for progression of glaucoma. So it is very, very, very important that you use your medication. Uh, we, we did a study a few years ago, and this is uh, called a dosing aid. Um, and this was produced by uh, Alcon. And, and uh, this is the bottle sits in a little device. Um, you can see a little schematic that the device has something at the back, which you press and that administers the, dry, the drop into your eye. You can bring this device back to the office and we have a little docking unit, which is this little big square thing at the bottom. And we can hook that up to a computer and uh, with a little program, we can actually see how well people are, are using their medication because it'll indicate uh, the day um, of, the, of the month of the calendar that the eye drop was used. And when we actually look at uh, sort of patients and, and they did a study where they actually gave people this monitor, they just told them they got their medication for free and they could use it for the month and that they would bring back the bottle. And then the second month they gave it back to the patients and said to them, this time around, we're actually gonna monitor you. This has got a little chip in it that'll tell you how well you're using your medication. And basically, if you, if you actually interview patients, and um, I mean, some people are as low, I mean, about 60% of people say they've taken medication. It, you can see the percent of patients that really do it is really low. And this is what people report. And you can see some people report, um, I mean, 100%. So 80% of patients report that they use their medication 100% of the time. In reality, these same people who had their, um, their drop usage monitored with that eye drop monitor, you can see 100% uh, of patients that used it was less than 20%. So you can see there's a big difference. And so the bottom line is this, um, you can say that you're using your medication, but a lot of times you're not. And, and it, the honest reality is we are human, we will miss drops. Let's just keep that misses to a minimum. So 40% of glaucoma patients miss scheduled follow-up visits and 60% of glaucoma patients fail to use their glaucoma medications as directed. So please don't be one of these statistics. Let's work together, talk to your doctor, talk to the doctor's staff, use your medication. And if there's problems with your medication, let us know. And this is just a sample eye chart I did with my daughter yesterday. Um, there's many different ways you can do it. What we need to do is try and make whatever aid is possible for you to remember to use your drops at a consistent time. So for example, Cosopt is an eye drop that's twice a day. I picked a white eye drop because the cap is white, uh, at least on the ones bottles that I had. If I'm not mistaken, it might be orange for some people, but it's also gone generic. It's a twice a day drop. So best time to instill it, eight in the morning and eight in the evening. And if you have this little chart, you can refer to it. Alpha Gan is a three time a day drop. Um, again, it's got a purple top. So I just randomly picked three times in the day for you to use it. Pilocarpine can be used anywhere from two to four times a day and then Zalatan at nighttime. So, I mean, this is something that you can easily create. You can color code the bottles and, um, and then just kind of help you. Sometimes it's 
even if you can create a 30 day calendar, uh, then you can actually tick off that you actually administered the eye drop. There are now smartphone apps that can actually help uh, you administer your eye drop. They'll, they'll buzz your phone. Uh, you can actually create a little schedule in there um, with whatever medications that you use. And um, I mean, they, they are helpful in, in reminding you when to take your drops. And you can actually, uh, once you again, you've administered the drop, you can indicate on the app that you used it. So if you come and visit me and I say to you, uh, Mr. So-and-so, have you been using your eye drops? You can say, yes, Dr. Binlish, would you like to see? And you can show me the app and you can show me that, uh, that I have. Now, just be aware um, that uh, eye drop monitor, I never talked about, but uh, I mean, there were some instances where people of the day before their appointment turned the applicator upside down and squeezed it multiple times to make it look like they used the medication. And that was picked up on the monitor. So again, with these, just don't go at the end of the month and start ticking off that you've been using them. I sometimes do that with my exercise program, with my trainer. If I didn't feel like working out for the month, I just uh, kind of open up the app at the end of the month and tell them what months, uh, what days I did work out when in fact I didn't. There are gonna be some uh, new treatments uh, coming out for glaucoma. One of the most promising ones is something called Bimodoprost SR. And it's a, it's a little uh, implant. This is what the implant looks like. It's very tiny. It comes in an injector system and we basically inject it into the eye through a very, very, very tiny incision. And this uh, implant slowly releases medication into your eye. Uh, the, the pivotal FDA study has shown that it significantly lowers eye pressure and one implant may last up to a year. So this might help with compliance. Um, I'm not sure when this will be released in Canada. It was just approved in the United States uh, about a year ago and uh, is currently being used there. Uh, another option is to place a little slow release implant into your nasal lacrimal duct, which is in the corner of your eye. And again, it will slowly release eye drop. Again, the biggest issue is, is these implants don't last forever, so they will need to be replaced. The last is a ring, and this is again a bimatoprost ring that your doctor can put um, sort of uh, around the outer edges uh, of your eye, but inside your eye. And again, it slowly releases the eye drop over um, the medication over four to six weeks. Again, these are all just ways that we can help with compliance. I'm just going to show you a short video now on uh, how to apply your glaucoma drops. Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Binlish from Oakville Eye Associates. Uh, this is my assistant, uh, Chereel, and she's going to demonstrate to you today how to apply eye drops. So, Chereel, take it away. Can you turn up your volume a bit, Raj, if possible? Pull down your lower lid. Instill the eye drop looking up into the little pouch that you create. Close your eye, and you want to close it for three minutes, and you want to pinch the little uh, area in the corners of your eyes, and you want to do this for approximately three minutes. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Um, Hi, everybody. So thank you for your time. And to our supporters, thank you for your generous support. Uh, without your help, um, we are uh, not able to fund some of the most promising glaucoma research in Canada. And please contribute. Um, your, your, your money does go a long way. And it, it does help us um, find different things for glaucoma, including research into better medications, research into better um, statistics on how we can help people with glaucoma, and research into cures for glaucoma. So once again, thank you for your attention.